Hola amigos, welcome to yet another shader tutorial. In the next couple of videos, I'll talk about procedural materials and how to bake them into regular texture sets. Today, I have a few things to cover, so let's jump right into the shader graph and start adding some nodes. This is an extended version of a technique shown by Ryan Brox in an Unreal demo. I'll put a link in the description for those interested. To create a tiling pattern for our bricks, I'll start with a texture coordinate and break it into its two components, U and V, so we can have non-square tiles. These values right now go from 0 to 1, so we need to multiply them by a couple of scalar parameters that I called X tiles and Y tiles respectively. I gave these parameters default values of 8 and 16 for this example. Now our 0 to 1 UV goes from 0 to 8 in the U axis and from 0 to 16 in the V axis, as you can see on the preview. However, we only need the fractional part of this value, so add a frac node to each and connect those with an append vector node. Now we have something that starts to resemble our target pattern with a full 0 to 1 UV per tile. We could already map a texture here and call it a day, but we are going to add a few controllable features to our material. The first of these is going to be a horizontal offset in alternating rows, usually seen in brick layouts. After the multiply node on the V or Y axis, insert a seal node. This is the equivalent of assigning each row an integer from 1 to 17 in this case. The model of these will be alternatively 1 or 0, which you can think of as a mask that will determine where are we applying the offset. All we have to do now is multiply this value by a new scalar parameter, then add that to the U coordinate before we take its fractional part to displace the bricks horizontally by that amount. A default value of 0.5 will give us a classic brick wall pattern. A possible variation of this effect would be to have a global offset per row by multiplying the offset by the row count directly instead of the modular 2, but we won't do that in this example. Next, I'm going to start using these UVs to map a diffuse texture to our base color output in the material. However, if I just connect the brick UVs to the texture, you will notice an issue immediately. There is no variation, so our color doesn't look too good. And that is the key to making procedural textures in Unreal, Unity, Substance Designer, Photoshop, or any other software. The more variation and details that you add to it, the less it will look like the result of some algorithm. As we saw earlier, the ceiling of the scale UV coordinates gives us an integer per row or tile. And using the same analogy as before, appending these values together is kind of like assigning each brick a unique ID. I'm also appending a constant zero next because the vector noise that I will use requires a vector3 input. The vector noise node generates a noise pattern based on position. If I preview this value, we can see that now we have a unique color random ID per individual brick. We can use this for all sorts of effects, like randomized texture offsets. To achieve that, we just need to mask the red and green channels of the noise output, and optionally multiply this value by another scalar parameter to control the magnitude of the random offset. After doing some graph layout organization, I realized that the texture that I was using doesn't tile correctly, so I need to add control of its scale. I'll do that by first adding the offset to the brick UVs and then multiplying this result by a new parameter before connecting it back to the texture coordinates. Now we are using a different bit of the texture on each brick instead of the whole image, but the result is still too homogeneous. To improve it, I'm going to add some luminosity variation per brick. I'll mask one of the noise channels and multiply the texture color by this number. But the result, as we'll see in a second when I preview it, is way too intense. There are many ways to control the amount of variation, but a simple one is to add a linear interpolate node between the plain texture and the one with the full effect, 
and expose a parameter to control the alpha. After doing that, and reconnecting the base color output, we can start to play with the default values to try achieving something slightly more natural. The next aspect of the material that I want to change is the size and bevel of the bricks. We can make a rounded rectangle function to have full control over the corner radius and size, but for simplicity we'll use the existing box mask 2D function. Its first input is the position, in our case the brick UVs. The second one, the center of the box, which we'll keep constant at 0.5. The third and fourth inputs correspond to the box bounds and the size of the edge falloff gradient. We'll do that with a single vector 3 parameter. Its first two components used for the bounding box size and the third one for the falloff value. While using this simplified box mask 2D method is faster and easier, the falloff gradient is calculated as vector length which can cause the tiles to become too rounded with larger values and smaller box sizes. However, for this example it shouldn't cause any major issues, so I'll stick with it. As we saw in earlier tutorials, a step function can be used to make a binary mask for the crowd in this case. We could instead offset and power the box mask to generate a soft transition between the crowd and brick textures, but, like I said before, I want to keep things simpler for this video. I will also expose another value to control the threshold of this mask, connected to the X input on the step node. Now that we have a mask, we can start differentiating between the crowd and the bricks. The first step will be to add a simple color tint a linear interpolate between two input vectors using our growth mask as alpha value. After that, multiply this tint by the color before reconnecting it back to the material output. While you were not looking, I reorganized the layout a bit and added a second texture sample for the crowd. This one is mapped to the default UV coordinates with a scaling factor. The next problem I want to tackle is the lack of normal maps. Since the material doesn't have any yet, it looks completely flat. We can add a baked rock normal to it, but it will be missing the brick shapes, since we are generating those inside the shader. Thankfully, our box mask from earlier looks like a height map. We can get its slope with derivatives, and using some trigonometry, calculate the normal map. I skipped the long detail explanation, but let me know in the comments if you want to see a dedicated video on how to calculate normals. Either way, feel free to pause the video now and copy this section of the graph. Finally, a flattened normal node can be used to change the intensity of this map via exposed parameter. Since it is more intuitive to edit normal intensity than flatness, I also added a multiply by minus 1. After connecting our normal map to the output, our material doesn't look flat anymore. As I mentioned before, you could blend this normal map with a pre-baked rocky one to improve the appearance, but today's tutorial is going to be already too long, so I'll skip that step. One thing to consider is that as we add more instructions and texture samplers, the complexity of the material will make it less and less suitable to use in runtime. It won't be an issue for now and for this example, but I will cover how to bake these shaders into textures in a future video. Going back to the shader, the next variation that I want to add is some global distortion, so the bricks are not perfectly aligned and square. This is simply achieved by adding another texture sample, with a parameter to control the scale, and second parameter to control the intensity of the effect. 
Remember to mask the red and green channels of the texture before adding it to the UV coordinates. The next effect will be to add some cracks around the edges of the bricks. First, we need to isolate the edges and also have some control over how far these cracks reach. Reversing the box mask with a 1 minus node and subtracting an exposed parameter will achieve that. Then, we have to multiply it by the mask to make sure that the effect doesn't get into the crowd. Note that I also added a 1 minus node to the intensity parameter to make it more intuitive to edit it later on the material instance. Since we are going to multiply the cracks texture over the height map that we made earlier, we can use another linear interpolation between the texture and a constant value of 1 using our edge mask as alpha. As we can see in the preview, the texture now is correctly applied only on the beveled edges of each brick and we can control how far they reach into them. Now we just need to use this new height map to replace the DDX and DDY inputs on our previous normal calculation and we're done with this part. Since this video is starting to be a bit on the longer side, I think that I'm going to end right here. I added some constant values to the metallic and roughness outputs of the material, but those could be exposed parameters as well. Other suggestions for you to try are adding a bake normal map, calculating height and normals for the crowd, adding roughness variations, a global dirt layer, or graffiti art. Post your suggestions in the comments. And that is all for today, folks. I hope you learned something new, or at least enjoyed the video. See you next time!